congregation, please, I have in my possession a mobile phone. I think the person accidentally dropped it during the procession. So if you have accidentally misplaced your phone, kindly see me for identification and collection. Thank you so much. Let us worship the Lord. Let us worship God. Processional hymn, children's service nine. Children's service hymn nine, sorry.
sea that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world. Amen. Melody. Oni ji Christo ka seloni je anti Christo. Ahaba isra boja le no ke bo e bo no to na e na e flanga le jo. Oh, 
let us thank God for everything that he has done for us. God is so faithful. He has given us another day. And he deserves our thanksgiving. In our hearts, let us appreciate all that God has done for us this morning. Let us thank God. We have continued to thank God because whatever he has done for us, we cannot even count it. It's unmeasurable. It is undescribable. We are thanking God for our lives and for all that belongs to us. We are thanking God for our family, our children, and even uh, this nation. Let's all give thanks to God this morning. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and living your Spirit till your word. If we say there is no sin as we make him a liar. The word of God says that when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all righteousness. The word of God says that there is no righteous, no, not one. And our righteousness is like a filthy rag before him. This morning, let us humbly ask for forgiveness of our sins. salvation to reflect with reverence on your mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord mighty God our heavenly father you so love the world that you gave your son Jesus Christ to us to seek and to save the lost we are remember him as we remember him who sought no glory for himself but rather sought to do your will and to make known your saving love by his perfect sacrifice. We are humbly before you and confess our unworthiness and sin. You sent your son to show us the path of life. 
yet we have strayed from your way continually. You have shown forth his kingly right. We have seen his glory. Yet while offering him the praise of our lips, we have not given him the loyalty of our lives. We have followed our own pleasures. We have refused the way of the cross. Father, we acknowledge with shame that we are without excuse. Rebuke our stubbornness and folly. Have mercy upon us and grant us true repentance that our sins may be forgiven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Petition. O oh, Jesus Christ, who this day entered the rebellious city where you were to die, enter our hearts, retreat you, and subdue them only to yourself. Bring us into the self-fellowship of the meek and lonely, and as your faithful disciples bless your coming, and spread their garments on the way, make us ready to lay at your feet all we have and to bless you, who comes in the name of the Lord. Grant that after we have confessed and worshiped you on earth, we may be among the number of those who are the last shall hail your eternal triumph and bear in their hands and palms of victory when every knee shall bow before you and every tongue confess that you are Lord to the glory of the Father. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Church choir.
Our first scripture reading for this morning is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 9. Isaiah 50, 4 to 9. Let's listen to the word of God. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning, he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ears, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me. Let us stand up together. Who is at my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. This is the word of God. Our second reading is taken from Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Have this mind among yourselves which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though, he was in the, who, though he was not, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Take our second scripture reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verse 1 to 11. Mark 11, 1 to 11. Shall we listen to the word of God? Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent his two disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter into it, you will find a coat tied on which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it and will send it back immediately. And they went away and found a coat tied at the door outside in the street. And they untied it. And some of them standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the coat? And they told them what Jesus had said. And they let them go. And they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it. And he sat on it, and many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the field. And those who went before, and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David, Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany to the twelve, the word of the God. We'll continue our service with AGH 142, the first four stanzas.
Indeed, we are being told the old, old story that always, when it's being told, it becomes new. Hallelujah. This morning, I welcome you to today's service that is Palm Sunday. And I bring greetings from Bethlehem, who are born. Your little one says, by God's grace, they are doing well. And it is well with them. And it will be well with them. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, this morning, once again, we have come to your feet. We have come before your presence, O God, to listen to your word. Yes, O God, speak. Speak your word. That let all hearts, O God, enjoy eating, refreshing in your word. Help us, O God, to understand what you have for us today. We thank you and we give you praise. I also commit my very life, O God, into your hands. That you use me this day as you use the court to proclaim your word. Thank you for answered prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, today in the whole world world, Christians are celebrating Palm Sunday. A day that is commemorating the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. And in the Gospel of Mark, as it was read, Jesus has been going to Jerusalem always when he was an infant with the parents. But what makes it so different this time? And as such, certain cities or certain towns were mentioned. These towns that are mentioned show us the distance or the intervals that Jesus has to take before entering Jerusalem, the city of God. And when you read scriptures, you will see that Bethany is about one mile away to enter Jerusalem. So as he enters, or at the mouth of Olives, the entrance of Jerusalem, the Bible says the people started shouting, Hosanna. Hosanna. As it is, it's a call for help. It is our plea for God to save. A help that deeply expresses trust and hope. That the one who to him the prayer was said truly has the power to save. Hallelujah. So the people were shouting Hosanna because they know for all this world, for long, they were expecting a savior. They were expecting someone who is coming to deliver them from the hands of the Roman emperor. These people have expected long ago, long, long ago. And for this reason, or this importance for which we always celebrate or commemorate, we see that it is the climax of his ministry, that is Jesus' ministry, the son of David, the king of kings, the conqueror of sins and sicknesses. People from far and near has heard about him a lot what he has been doing, what he can do. Raising the dead, healing all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. And so, for this time as he enters, for scripture to be fulfilled, 
these people were expecting that as he comes, oh yes, he is coming to redeem them. He is coming to save them. His coming is going to be something that is going to forever give them their peace. Hallelujah. But dearly beloved, the Bible says branches, clothes were laid for the donkey to walk on. The branches, as you did this morning, shouting Hosanna to the Lord, believing in your heart that really there is someone who has come to save you. But my question to you this morning, as you sing along, as you enjoy the songs, as you commemorate this day, do you really, do you really, deeply in your heart, saying that the Lord should save you? As it is our theme for today, Hosanna, save us now. Are you telling the Lord to save you now? Yes, you have to. And when we, when we look at references, in Leviticus 23, verse 40, Psalm 118, verse 25 to 27, it talks about the palm branches. So I try to look at the symbol, why palm branches? Because we have other branches. Why is it that palm branch was mentioned specifically? And I realize that the palm branch stands or symbolizes victory of the faithful over enemies, over the soul. It is a symbol of victory, triumphant, peace, and eternal life. So the people of Jerusalem, as they have been under punitive and oppressive Roman rule, they needed someone who would give them that political freedom. And this anticipation of a political Savior, this made those of them who heard of Jesus from far, from far also came. This morning I want to find out from you, from the world of sin, from where you were, have you come this morning? Are you welcoming the Lord Jesus Christ to have that spiritual freedom? They were looking for physical freedom, but Jesus came, not only for uh, physical freedom, but then he came to give us spiritual freedom as well. He came to save us from our sin and from eternal damnation. I want us to look at certain things that were mentioned. And the first thing I want us to look at is the donkey. Why the donkey? Don't we have so many animals in the world? Didn't, uh, didn't the Lord himself, God, Jehovah, our provider, provided us with so many animals? Why is it then that the donkey was mentioned? And in verse 3, I want to ask a question that we all know that if you want something, you have to seek permission. But this time, I want us to look at whether Jesus actually sought for permission. Well, I don't know, maybe you do. But I suppose it may be pre-arranged 
as it was in the case with the upper room, giving reference to Mark 14, verse 14 to 15. But over there in Mark, we were told Jesus instructed, instructed two of his disciples with these instructions. Immediately as you enter the village, you will find a colt, a young donkey, tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone say to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it and will send it back here immediately after its use. Mark chapter 11, verse 2 and 3. Jesus Christ making orders for young and reading donkey signifies that he was making reference to himself. Yes, with the Jews, they see unbroken animal that is being used or they use it with religious sacrifices. And we have this reverence in Numbers chapter 19, verse 2. With this, Jesus is trying to make a clear indication that he, as the king of kings, he, as the lord of lords, he who holds the whole world in his hands, have that authority with him. Therefore, Jesus Christ on the donkey fulfilled a prophecy by Zachariah, we say, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, a colt, the fall of a donkey. And this is a reference in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. In fact, today I was expecting the choristers to sing that very hymn. The king of kings chose to ride on a donkey, signifying peace, signifying humility. Yes, a donkey, which gives us this very symbolic items. He didn't choose a horse. And when you read about a horse, a horse is meant for war. Horses are meant for power. But Jesus, because he is the king of kings, because he is of peace, he chose to ride on a donkey. Now let's look at the entry into Jerusalem. Jesus Christ was accompanied by a lot of people, massive crowd, and they were shouting, they were making noises, they were making noises of jubilation, hoping that yes, the Lord has come to save them. And because of this noise, the Bible tells us that the Pharisees in the crowd told Jesus Christ to rebuke his disciples. He should make them keep quiet because they are disturbing. The Hosanna Uphiria that surrounded Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, it ended so quickly because what was in the mind of those who shouted, Hosanna, wasn't met. Therefore, Mark recorded in Mark chapter 11, verse 12, that, and Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple, and when he had looked round upon all things, and now the evening tide was come, he went out to Bethany with the twelve, simply because he realized the people were not ready. Are you ready for the Lord? 
Are you ready for what you have sung this morning? Hosanna. Are you ready for the Lord to save you? Are you ready spiritually to make the Lord your abode? I want us to note the motive of the people who were by then following. The crowd unfolded Christ Jesus because what they were expecting wasn't fulfilled. Are your expectations being fulfilled? Since you came to Christ, since you gave your life to Christ, if you haven't, then I'm sorry to say you are just like the people who were only shouting Hosanna just for physical freedom. But this morning I'm here to tell you that our Lord Jesus Christ came into this world for spiritual freedom both physical and spiritual. And so, if you are over there and you don't have that spiritual freedom, I urge you, I encourage you that apart from the physical freedom, there is the need for you to have that spiritual freedom. And the spiritual freedom will let you have your physical freedom. Hallelujah. Let us now look at the third thing that I want us to look at. That is the crowd. So what about them? Why the crowd? Now the crowd that followed Jesus, some of them went before him. Some of them followed him. Some of them came after him while he was entering Jerusalem. The crowd had earlier witnessed the healing of the blind man Bartimaeus. That is in Mark chapter 10, verse 46. They witnessed how God healed him, how God made him to receive his sight. And so, they were in agreement. That was the main reason why they were following him. They were in agreement of what they have seen. So they want to testify that really Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ is the Son of David. Giving us reference to Mark chapter 12 verse 47. The crowd, believing of this, held him. They held the Messiah. That is why they joined joyously in the procession. But the leaders, that is the Pharisees, they were afraid. Why were they afraid? When you take reverence to John chapter 12 verse 19, it was recorded there that you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Hallelujah. So because the world has gone after the Lord, as you are seated here this morning, it is the wish of the enemy that by now, either you are somewhere else or not sitting under the feet of Jesus. So they did not only shout Hosanna, but also they sang, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Because Jesus didn't fulfill the wish of the people, the crowd, those who were looking for the political freedom from the Romans, they later demanded that the Lord, the Messiah, should be crucified. That is the more reason they were shouting on that day, crucify him, crucify him. Why? This is the nature of humankind. This is our nature. 
Always when we are expecting something and we don't get it, then we turn to say other things. As many of us behave the same way. When our prayers are not being answered, then we turn to other sources for help. I know and I believe and I've heard that some of us, even though we come to church, even though we've given our lives to Christ, even though we are saying and singing Hosanna, many of us, many of us, when we have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, and we are not getting our answers, that is where we look elsewhere. This morning, as you sit before the Lord, this morning, as you sing Hosanna to his name, this morning, as you say and tell the Lord, save us now. Mean that thing. Mean that phrase. Mean those sentences and tell the Lord that with all your heart, with everything as Paul will put it, what shall separate us from the love of God? Should hunger, tribulation, fear, what have you? No. None of these things will separate him from the love of God. Will you agree with Paul this morning to say that as we sing Hosanna this morning, as we call upon the Lord to save us from our oppressors, things that are oppressing us, things that are making us weak, things that are making us go after other things, things that are making us running after other human beings because we feel they have the solution. This morning, I want to remind you, it is only Jesus who has the solution to everything. Hallelujah. Therefore, as you sing Hosanna, as you tell the Lord to save you now, know that he has the whole world in his hands. Dearly beloved, it is important to draw the attention of people to the one who saves both the soul and body the man Jesus Christ. How many times do you go out there to witness, to tell others of Christ? Yes, the church, Presbyterian Church of Ghana, is declaring that we should go out there and bring souls to him. Many are perishing. Many are there. What is your role? What role are you playing? What are you doing to bring others, to draw the attention of others to the one who saves both the soul and body, the man Jesus Christ? I urge you, dearly beloved, that let us run to him and cry out, with a genuine heart, a genuine cry, that Lord, save us now. You may be here, you may be seated among us, you may be coming to church, you may be listening to the word of God, but have you ever genuinely, sincerely asked the Lord to save you? Ask the Lord that you have given your heart to him, Asking him to come, to dine with you, and to be Lord over your life. Or you are just like the people who were expecting otherwise, that physical freedom. The Lord is here this morning so that our struggles in life that we go through, he will save us from it. 
but he will only do that successfully and give us that total freedom from these people, both physical and spiritual oppressors, if only we turn to him. The Lord is calling you unto salvation. He says, salvation is his. It is in his hands, and he gives reward to whoever searches and go after it. Beloved in Christ, the greatest moment in human life is when we acknowledge our weaknesses and accept the fact that we cannot do it ourselves. We cannot help ourselves in our predicaments. In our worries, in our trials, in our temptations, our strength is small. The wisdom and the knowledge we have cannot save us. It is only Jesus Christ who can save us. Beloved, gracefully, Christ Jesus responds to our call. Save us now. Save us now. I want you to genuinely shout, Hosanna, save me now, if you really mean it. If you really mean it within your heart, then the Lord is in to save you. May your cry for salvation be heard. And may you be saved from all the things that trouble you. In conclusion, I want us to look at all that happened. And it all happened. Pointing to Jesus. One, Jesus Christ was the reason why the tired young donkey was released. It is because of you that Jesus Christ came on this earth. It was because of the people that need salvation that Jesus entered into Jerusalem. So today I want you to know that it is because of you Jesus was the reason that the court was untied. Two, Jesus Christ was the reason why the crowd waved their palm branches. And it wasn't the court. It wasn't the young donkey. But it was Jesus Christ. And I believe this morning as you waved your branches, as you wave the pond, as you wave whatever, be it cloth, whatever you wave, I believe it was for Jesus and not for any other thing. It was for Jesus because palm branches stands for victory. You have waved because you know you have victoriously overcome the world. The third thing is that some people threw their clothes. If it were to be this modern world, they are going to lay rudimentary of red carpets just for the cult to walk on. But they did this because they know they have victory. The fourth thing is that Jesus Christ was the very reason the crowd shouted Hosanna. It was because of Jesus Christ that the people shouted Hosanna. The fifth point I have is that Jesus Christ is the only Messiah who don't only give us physical freedom, 
but he gives us spiritual freedom from the chains of Satan and his agents. All that is disturbing you when you run into him, when you call on him to save you, it is he, the only Messiah, who will give you that freedom. And my sixth point is that it is Christ Jesus who gives us eternal life. So as we run to him, as we call on him, as we live in him, as we believe in him, as we trust him, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to give us eternal life. Beloved in the Lord, it is fitting that during this week, from today till Easter morning, let us turn our thoughts to Jesus Christ. The one who gives light, he is the source of light. He is the source of life. And he is love. God is love. His love never changes. His love are being renewed each and every day. The multitudes in Jerusalem may have seen him as a great king who would give them freedom from the physical oppression. But in reality, he gave much more pure victory over the world, even as he stood. I want you to know that your deliverer is near. Cry your Hosanna, for he will give you absolute freedom. Can you turn to your sister or brother sitting near you, reminding him or her that your deliverer is near? Cry your Hosanna. He will give you absolute freedom. May the Holy Spirit minister to you as you continue to wait and sit under his tuition day in and day out. May the peace of God be with you. May the peace of God be in you. And may the peace of God be around you. Amen. Before we affirm our faith, I want you to pray this prayer. When you are going to thank God and praise God for the freedom he has given you in Christ Jesus. So you are going to pray and cast all your burdens on him knowing that he cares. Three, you are going to ask God to redeem you from the forms of oppressions. All forms of oppressions, you know them. Four, pray for your local church. Eben, Asa. Pray for the districts. The other locals that are in the district. Pray for the presbytery. The gun, presbytery, and pray for the head office. Those who are leading us, pray that really they will see the Lord and follow as He instructs. Finally, we are going to pray for Jenny Mercies as we are approaching celebrating the Easter that the Lord himself will give us a meaning, real meaning to the celebration of Easter. Let us pray. On to Jesus I surrender On to him I free I will ever love 
and trust in His presence. Are you really surrendering all to Him? Are you willing for Him to give you the spiritual freedom that you need? Are you willing to go out there to tell others about this love? Lord and our God, we surrender all unto you. Even as we thank and praise you, O God, for the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus. We cast all our burdens upon you, for we know you care. We ask, O God, that you redeem us from all forms of oppressions, be it physical, be it spiritual. It is our prayer, O oh God, that you be with our church, the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. The four courts, that's Lord, we will uphold the gospel. And it is our prayer, O oh God, that even as we enter into the celebration of Easter, give us the real meaning of Easter, that we will celebrate it with a meaning, giving our all unto you. This is our humble prayer. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. With all this that you have heard, can you boldly affirm your faith in the Lord? In whom do you believe? God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord bless you. Amen. Team of Trust. AGH one four three one two two.
Brethren, the peace of the Lord be with you. Announcements for Sunday, 24th March, 2024. Today is Palm Sunday. On behalf of Session, I welcome you to the service, especially all those worshipping with us for the first time. May all persons worshipping with us for the first time please turn for us to acknowledge your presence. The sermon on the theme, Hosanna, Lord save us, was delivered by Reverend Mrs. Eugenia Lai, minister in charge of the Bethlehem Preaching Point, Usu Abob. There will be baptism this afternoon at 1 p.m. Upcoming events in March and April 2024. Due to the ongoing 40-day fast, the chapel will be open each day between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. for individual meditation. Congregants are encouraged to put aside some money to support the Lent Needy Fund. This will be collected on Easter Sunday. Friday, 29th March, is Good Friday. On this day, the Holy Communion will be administered during both services. Counseling towards the communion service is as follows. Tuesday, 26th to Thursday, 28th. Time is 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. each day. The venue is the church administration office. On this on Good Friday in the afternoon at 2 p.m., there will be a service to commemorate the seven words of Jesus on the cross, after which there will be a procession to join members of St. Barnabas Anglican Church to continue the procession through the principal streets of Osu to symbolically mark the death and burial of Jesus Christ. The ESR committee would like to meet two rest from each group, both gener generational and service groups, just after this first service. From tomorrow, Monday 25th to Thursday 28th, March, there will be dawn broadcast. The time is 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. each day. From tomorrow as well, the Passion Week evening services will also start in the evening at 6.30 p.m. each day. On Saturday, 30th of March, a special communion service for senior citizens will be held at 9 a.m. The church choir and the singing band will be in attendance. As has been the practice over the years, the Gang Presbytery will hold this year's Holy Saturday Prayer Rally at the Mount Moriah Prayer and Retreat Center, Danfa, on Saturday, 30th March. The time is between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. 31st March is Easter Sunday, and the theme will be, He is Risen. Bible passages for the day are Isaiah 25, 6 to 9, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 11, and Mark 16, 1 to 8. On Easter Monday, that is 1st April, there will be Dome Brockhouse and House to House Evangelism at 4 a.m. There will also be intergroup fun games starting at 8 a.m. The games will include football, sack race, lime and spoon, drought, ludu owari, apple in water, and cats. As a result of these fun games, there will be pairing for teams. And this will be as follows. There will be male teams. OEPC Children's Service versus JY Hesse Group. That is for the male teams as well. YPG and versus JY Seniors. YAF and First Service Choir versus Men's Fellowship and Second Service Choir. Then Brigade versus BSPG. The ladies will not be exempted. We have female teams. So we have the Women Fellowship and Singing Band versus First and Service, First and Second Service Choir. 
and then YPG versus JY seniors for the females. So let's all prepare towards the games. After the games, members will gather at the church premises to interact and have fun. There will be a live band in attendance supported by the Ebenezer Melody, Brigade and Singing Band. On Easter Monday, there will be procession through the principal streets of Osu. This will start at 3 p.m. and end at 5.30 p.m. The attire is the 195 years anniversary Lacoste or T-shirt. Generational and service groups should display their flags and banners to grace the occasion during this day. Vendors who would like to sell during the program will have to contact the chairperson of the ESR committee, Mr. Francis Brown, and they will be expected to pay a token of 30 Ghana cities and above, depending on the kind of product for sale to support the cleaning of the compound. Please kindly note that on this day, that is Easter Monday, there should not be any alcohol on the church premises. On 28th of March, Thursday, carry prayer and deliverance service will take place here at 10 a.m. The theme is the blood of Jesus. There will be a training and workshop for social media missionaries on Saturday, 13th April at 9 a.m. in the chapel. All persons who are interested should send their names to Reverend Sowa or the IT officer at the church office. As part of the target set for the church and the mission and evangelism, we will embark on a visit to the police hospital. Congregants are therefore encouraged to donate either cash, toiletries, milo, milk, soap, etc. to support this worthy cause. The Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Praise Congregation Atomic Hills, is looking for a qualified person to be employed as an accounts officer. Kindly visit the notice board for further details on this vacancy. There will be a meeting of all committees on Wednesday, 3rd April at 6 p.m. in the chapel to review the first quarter 2024 activities as in the work plan. In the sure hope of the resurrection of the dead in Christ, we announce the death of Madame Juliana Odufle Yeboa, a former chorister and member of Women's Fellowship. She was the mother of Mr. George Aye Atakora and daughter-in-law of Mrs. Rebecca Atakora. She died on 15th of March at age 89. Burial arrangements will be announced later. Burial service, Friday 5th of April. Mrs. Veronica Ajub Baja from Shalom Congregation. The burial service will start at 9 a.m. Madam Abigail Nakai Togbo, member of the Women's Fellowship, and mother of Miss Mahalia Ajaye, burial service will start at 11 a.m. Saturday, 6 April, Mrs. Diana Hana Achei Ayi, spouse of late Reverend Joshua Ayi, pre burial service will start at 7 a.m. And then the burial service will start at 9. Madam Elizabeth Kokoikwe, burial service will be held at her family house at Osu at 11 a.m. Thanks, offering. An amount of 100 Ghana cities was found in the offertory box. The congregant is saying, Thank you, Lord. And the song is PHB 3. The, the third stanza. The Hammond family of Prafraha is thanking the Lord with an amount of 100 Ghana cities for all what he has done for them. Their song is VHB 61. Brethren, let's join these congregants and say, 
Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercies endure forever. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord. Please, let's take note of the following. Tomorrow is Lent Day number 35, so please, um, we are still in that season. Join in and let's pray together. And then also, the one member, one chair project is still on. Um, when we have ample time on ourselves next week, we will come up with the statistics so we know how many chairs we have so far. So please um, keep reminding each other. Um, women's Fellowship. Tomorrow, not tomorrow, on Good Friday, we'll have communion as has been announced. And then also on the 7th of April, we will have another communion. So the consultation we are doing, as we say speaking, will be once for the two. So when you come, then we'll record it as such. So we'll have two communions but one consultation. Again, the Women's Fellowship have produced some T-shirts for their members, as in the Abigail, Naomi, Esther, Docas, Deborah, and Hannah groups. So they come in colors for identification. And we are told that that is what you will be using, women. That's what you'll be using on Monday um, from the morning till um, the games and everything comes to an end. And then in the evening when we want to go on the Ajabe, then we wear our spa. Um, we want to dedicate these T-shirts. Please come. Pull them up so that the women's group can see. We want to dedicate these T-shirts to the glory of the Lord in the name of God who alone is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The T-shirts are on sale under the tree. So when you close, you can get there for a copy. We don't want to incur the wrath of the Lord upon this church. So we marry men and women. On Thursday, we, the Lord invited his son and his daughter into his holy um, institution of marriage. And they are here worshiping with us this morning. We ask Mr. and Mrs. Atakra Owusu to um, march forward here so we can introduce you to the church. Mr. and Mrs. Atakra Owusu. Please, we are not in a hurry, so take your time. You take your time, yes. Right. Mr., please, hook. Hook her, okay? Right. Please come up and then you face the congregation. Stand in the middle here. Yeah, and then face the congregation. So, congregation, um, before you is Mr. and Mrs. Atakra. The Lord has blessed them. And the Lord is going to bless them, and the Lord will bless them. So before you, Mr. and Mrs. Atakra. <clears throat> Papa, I know that you attend church elsewhere, okay? But I can assuredly tell you that this church is the number one church in Ghana, okay? And I desire 
that you join this church so that the Lord will increase your blessing. Will you join? All right, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We call upon Brother Charles to pray. Please still face the congregation. Father in heaven, we thank you this morning for your gracious love upon us. Before you are Mr. and Mrs. Atakura Wusu, that we thank you for the love you've shown upon them. They are joined together in holy matrimony, Lord Jesus Christ, to continue their journey. Father, we bring them before you that you keep strengthening their love. We keep increasing their love and you keep increasing their work, O oh Lord. We thank you for this journey. It's not that easy, but for Lord, we believe in you, that Lord, you alone will bless them. Whatever they desire, Lord Jesus Christ, to continue this journey, please bless them with. Fruit of the womb is most important, Daddy. We thank you, Holy Spirit, O oh God. And as Mr. Atakura has promised to join us, we pray, Lord, O oh God, that strength and that promise shall be here, and he will fulfill his promise to join our church. We thank you, Holy Spirit, O oh God, that our sister will not also follow him to his church, but rather drag him to this church. Father, we thank you for this grace. We your name be blessed this day forevermore. Amen. Um, we, thank, we thank the Lord, and we have a welfare package for you. It is for you to change your, your car, okay? Yes, right, okay. Thank you very much. God bless you. Dear Christian brothers and sisters, we want to spend some time to pray. And I'd like all of us to bow our heads and come before God. This day, he has admonished us on the theme, Hosanna, Lord, save us now. We want to pray and intercede for all persons who are members of our church, but for one reason or the other, they have become dormant. Let us pray for all such persons that whatever situation in which they find themselves, the Lord will save them. Shall we pray? Let us continue in prayer, interceding for the entire Osu community. There are several and many, many, many people in this community who have not given their lives to Jesus Christ. And this week we want to go out and do dawn broadcast. We want to pray that, Lord, let your spirit go before us and prepare their hearts that they will receive the message of salvation that they will receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Let us all pray. Let us pray and intercede for the sick, those at home, those in the hospitals and all kinds of places, that the Lord will save them and restore their health. For this, let us pray.
Hosanna, Lord, save us now. Dear friends, let's continue in our prayer and intercession for all who are unemployed and for those who have various challenges in their work and for that matter their finances. Let's pray that the Lord will visit them and save them and cause them to have work to do and also have good income and have peace of mind to live their lives, to take care of family and to worship him. Let us all pray. We have an anchor that gives the soul steadfast and sure while the bee lose room. Fast into the rock which cannot move grounded firmly in the sea, we have an anchor that is the soul, steadfast and sure, while the billows roll, fast into the rock, we continue to pray and intercede for our nation Ghana. Dear friends, we have only one nation Ghana. We have only one Ghana. We don't have any other. Let us pray for the nation Ghana that God will continue to control our lives and our hearts and our minds. God will control our speech and our deeds that there will be peace in this nation. Let us all pray for the nation Ghana. We are preaching election. We have a number of months away, but already the kind of tension that is building up in this nation, we cannot stand, we cannot wait for the worst to happen. Let us pray. Our Christian duty is to pray for the nation Ghana, that God will have mercy, that peace will reign in Ghana. Peace will reign before the election. Peace will reign during the election and after the election. And Ghana will continue to be a peaceful country. Let us pray to God. Let's continue praying that if there are some people who for their selfish reason are planning and putting in strategies that will cause us the peace of this country, that will cause us to go into a moment of shedding blood for the sake of ordinary elections, may God expose all such people. May their audio tapes and whatever come to the public that we will know them by their deeds that these people do not want us well so that we will desist from following such people.
let's continue praying that oh god give us a precedent and parliamentarians after your own heart those that you have prepared to lead us in a time like this lord please give us the wisdom to move in your direction that at the end of the day we'll say that the will of the lord alone is done Let us pray again that the Lord will save us from all manner of accidents on the roads and in the home, especially in this Easter season. May God save us. May God save our children from every kind of accident in the name of Jesus. Our Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. It is time to bless the Lord with our offerings. Uh, we have two offerings. The normal offering and the offering for fellow, uh, scholarship. Please, you know all what God has done for us. This is a time to show appreciation. Let's all give. Christo Caselon, Nije Anti Christo, Rafa Eshremoja, Leno, Kevo Evo. Drum on the 
Enye hawola Ije molala wohale Beije Molala pos Wopala In Christo, who manned in so, oh yeah, in, oh yeah, in Abba. Who was a in Christo, who manned in so, oh yeah, in, oh yeah, in. Who na him it is, na is it a na friend? Who a friend no? Who a friend no? Who da eja de ja su tumbo aso? Oh yeah, in. Who na him it? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, a Jesus, men and men, men and men, who pay a Jesus, who get a one, get a one, get a one, Yeah. 
about us. You are our glory and the lifter up of our heads. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We say, hallowed be your name. You are so good, O oh God. We thank you for how far you have brought us. And we thank you, O oh God, for what you are yet to do for us. Even though we do not know, we still give you thanks because your word tells us that your plans for us are for good and not for evil to give us an expected end. Father, we thank you for your divine provision, for your divine protection, for your divine provision and preservation of our us, O oh God. We thank you for the offering, O oh God, that you have given. We ask, O oh God, that you sanctify this offering with the blood of Jesus. The blood that speaks with other things than that of Abel's blood. That the money, O oh God, will be used to expand your work on this earth. We thank you for all that has given. And we, for those that were not able to give, Father, we ask that, that you will bless them. Because your word says that it is you that gives us power to make wealth. Lord, I pray also for those that are online. We ask, O oh God, that your hand will be stretched out unto them, even as your hand, O oh God, stretched out to the Israelites and brought them out of, the, out of Egypt. Father, we ask, O oh God, that your name alone be glorified. We thank you in no other name than the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who died and rose triumphantly. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Shall we resume our seat for one minute? Every year in election years, the church, PCG, appoints peace ambassadors. Last Thursday, the peace campaign was inaugurated. And fortunately for us, one of our own is among the 11 peace ambassadors for the PCG in Ghana. And she's our own mother, sister, and everything. Mama Nokodua. Overnight, she needs work uh, He has a sash around her neck. Uh, she's a, a peace ambassador for the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. And so let's stand and receive the benediction. But before that, we take a stand for peace. Now, as people, let's stand. As people of faith, God has commissioned us to be 
peacemakers, Matthew 5, 9, and ambassadors of peace for our nation. In this 2024 electioneering process, let us endeavor to fulfill this God-given responsibility by doing everything we can to maintain the peace of the nation. Shall we put our hands on our chest and say, I'm a peacemaker. I stand for peace. Amen. Now let us go with the peace of God. Now I commit you into the able hands of our God who is able to keep you from falling. May he continue to guide and to guard you. May he continue to show his face. May he continue to show his love bountifully unto you. And may his peace that passes all understanding rest and abide with all with us now and forevermore. Amen. is A G H ninety seven. A G H ninety seven.
Hello. Um, um, under the under the tree by the club, hundred club, there is a. Uh,